You just watched it live. NASA launching its SpaceX Crew 10 mission. This is part of the mission that is going to help bring Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams home. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying four crew members to the International Space Station for about a four month or so long mission. There will be a rendezvous, a handover about a couple of days, and then Wilmore and Williams who've been in space for nearly 300 days now, can embark home. Let's go ahead and listen to some of the NASA feed. Engines will shut down here in just about 10 seconds for Take Miko. Stage separation and SES-1. Main engine cutoff. SpaceX Dragon, two Alpha. Stage separation confirmed. Copy, two Alpha. Great call-outs and incredible views there on your left-hand screen. On your left-hand screen, you can see a view from stage one. <laughs> and an extremely excited crowd here in Hawthorne. Awesome views of that boost back burn on the first stage, as well as the MVAC engine igniting on the second stage. Great views there. Now the booster is in its boost back burn. This is the first of three burns as it makes its way back down to Earth. This will last about 45 seconds. And the crew, 10 crew, is still on board Dragon attached to Falcon 9 second stage, which you can see there on your right-hand screen. And we're now at three minutes and 20 seconds into today's flight. The vehicle is traveling about 6,500 miles per hour. They are on their way to the space station. And we did have that confirmation um, coming up of the boost back shutdown. And then coming up in at the T plus six minute mark. Uh, coming, and there we have our first images of the crew inside the Dragon spacecrafts as they make their way into orbit. And the crew Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Continuing to get good call outs. SpaceX, Dragon, copy nominal. Stage two, it continues to be on power with, uh, and it's firing until we get to that second stage engine cutoff around the nine minute mark of flight, so about five minutes of flight to go before Dragon will be flying free. <laughs> Some cool views there on your left hand screen. That's the first stage booster as it's making its way back down to Earth. This is a uh, ground tracking camera getting these awesome views. <laughs> and on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that lone Merlin vacuum engine of the second stage. We're continuing to get good performance on the second stage. And the crew's G-loads will dip right when we hit the separation events, and it's going to continue to build up until then. Dragon, SpaceX, nominal trajectory. SpaceX, Dragon, copy nominal. We're now at five minutes into today's flight uh, with a liftoff at 7.03 p.m. Pacific, 4.03 uh, p.m. Eastern, 4.03 p.m. Pacific, continuing to get good call outs as stage one makes its way back to Earth and stage two continues to fire, propelling Dragon into orbit. If you're just now joining us, the four members of Crew 10 launched from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And they're currently on board Dragon, still attached to Falcon 9 second stage, which you're seeing there on your right hand screen, on your left hand screen. The first stage vehicle is making its way back down to Earth. It already completed the first of three burns as the boost back burn. And the next event coming up for that vehicle is going to be the entry burn. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Great call outs there. That entry burn is coming up. SpaceX Dragon, copy nominal. Welcome back, everybody. We are going to be listening into NASA's coverage again in a couple of minutes, but I do want to bring in Scott Parazinski, a former NASA astronaut and CEO of Onward Air. Scott, uh, really everything looking picture perfect right now. What are your thoughts as we're watching the booster on the left-hand side get ready for its landing, and on the right-hand side we're seeing that capsule continue gorgeous to ascend? Textbook launch. The gorgeous textbook launch uh, here this, this evening, and I can guarantee that the crew on board the ISS is is watching this streaming video, and they're they're elated as well. Uh, their the ride home for uh, Sonny and Butch in particular is. Uh, is, is really exciting for not only them, but obviously their families. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to see them back home on Earth as well.
here in a, in a few days. Talking about the uh, four astronauts who are right now on the, the SpaceX Crew-10 mission. Or, you know what, actually, Scott, we're going to listen in. Hang on one second. Nominal trajectory. Again, great call-outs for... Confirmation there from the crew as they continue to make their way into orbit. Now seven minutes into today's flight, the first stage making its way back down to Earth, and the second stage continuing to fire. This is an awesome view. Let's see if we can see the center engine relight for that landing burn here in a few seconds. There's that landing burn. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches down on landing zone one. Scott, applause there in the <laughs> control the room. First stage has made its way applause back there in the control room. This, this is really one of the unique features of SpaceX. Talk about how uh, fun it is to watch these boosters come back and land safely. If that never gets old. It's it's extraordinary, uh, the technology and the, the edge computing that it takes to make something uh, that difficult look so easy. But I can guarantee you that it's, it's an extraordinarily difficult uh, process, uh, engineering and physics to make that that happen. Uh, they make it uh, look easy and they've done it uh, so many times now with, with great success and and in the process, yeah, bringing down the cost of, of getting cargo and, and astronauts up to space. So um, we're, we're in, living in a new age of, uh, of space flight exploration for sure. Scott, how long until these astronauts will make it to the ISS? And take us into sort of the mind and heart of an astronaut sitting on that capsule right now. I mean, are you thinking anything? Are there any emotions? Or are you just trying not to barf? <laughs> well, no, I, the motion sickness won't hit them until they probably get unstrapped. And it, it only happens to about half of uh, first-time flyers typically. But uh, right now, they're grinning from ear to ear. They've made it safely uh, most of the way uh, up to uh, orbital velocity. They're, they've got about a 28-hour, uh, I think, uh, uh, process to get to the International Space Station dock and, and then open up the hatches. Um, so it's a relatively quick trip up to the ISF. They're traveling at the speed of a bullet, 17,500 miles an hour, and, wow. and playing a, a game of catch-up, that we, process we call rendezvous, that will happen uh, sometime tomorrow. And um, and and then it's uh, time to get to work. Uh, I know this new crew is is excited to spend their four-plus months uh, on, on the ISS. They'll be doing a bunch of science and uh, um, potentially some spacewalks and robotics. A uh, really exciting mission for, for this team. Scott, hang out, hang out for us for a second. Let's go ahead and listen to a little bit more of NASA's feed. I believe that we could possibly be hearing uh, from the astronauts shortly. There was another separation that they are celebrating. There on your screen, you can see that Dragon separation, that second stage making its way. And Dragon is now flying free. 10 minutes into today's flight. That was about a minute after we had that second inch and cutoff and orbital insertion. And it looks like a good separation, good rates. Dragon now flying free. There on the right hand <laughs> side of your screen, you can see some first images of Crew 10 inside the Dragon Endurance spacecraft as they're now successfully in orbit. Dragon, SpaceX, Chief Engineer on Countdown 1. On behalf of the entire Falcon team, we thank you for flying with Falcon and wish you a great mission. Over to LD. It was an honor flying with you this evening. We wish you well on your journey and give Crew 9 our best. Thank you for flying SpaceX. Commander Ann McLean, thank you to all of the teams from across the world who contributed to the launch today. Spaceflight is tough, but humans are tougher. Days like today are made possible only when people choose to do the harder right over the easier wrong. Build relationships, choose cooperation, and believe in the inherent goodness of all people across the world. To my family and friends, without you, I would not be here. Explore boldly, live gracefully, go crew 10. Now over to pilot Nicole Ayers.
to call Ayers again. We are not the first humans to get to orbit, and we wouldn't be here without the bravery and hard work of those who have paved the way for human spaceflight. We now get the unique perspective of Earth without borders and get to revel in the connectedness of humanity. I would be remiss to not once again acknowledge those who helped me get here to this wonderful view and this perspective, to the teachers, coaches, fellow officers, fellow teammates, Raptor Nation, to my friends and family that encouraged my dreams from the start. Thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. Let's bring in CBS News senior national correspondent Mark Strassman from the Kennedy Space Center. Mark, I know you're listening to this alongside us. One incredible quote we heard there from Commander McLean, uh, space travel is hard, tough, humans are tougher. I, I'm paraphrasing, but it, it's also so funny to hear. Thank you for flying SpaceX. Like, you know, they're just flying from, you know, Orlando to Manhattan. Yeah, it really is remarkable. As Scott was just saying, too, I mean, it looks so easy when they do it, and yet you have to understand just how incredibly complex all of this is, how a million things have to go right, how everybody involved has to bring their A game to the, uh, to the project every single day in advance of this, and then today, most of all. And it, the launch just looked picture perfect. I mean, it was a perfect day. Uh, there were no holdups, no technical snags whatsoever leading up to launch. And to, you could just hear it in the voices of the two American astronauts, how elated they were that everything had gone as, as well as it, as, it, as it has so far. And fingers crossed that, that everything from here on in goes just as smoothly until they dock to the ISS tomorrow night, Lizzie. And also the significance of Butch and Sonny being f able to finally come home in a couple of days, Mark. Um, obviously, they've taken it all in stride. There's been no narrative at the International Space Station that they're stranded or stuck or abandoned. I mean, they don't seem to have taken a single second for granted of being able to look at our beautiful marble planet from their windows. But, you know, you have to imagine. And they've expressed, too, they miss their families. They miss jumping in the ocean, playing with their pets. Um, but, but the significance of them coming home after, what, more than 285 days up there, what it was supposed to be, eight days? Yeah, they went up for eight days, and they've stayed more than nine and a half months. I mean, that's that's a pretty unexpectedly long business trip for for anybody right and you're right i mean for all the talk for all the talk of of astronauts being stuck in space or abandoned in space what they have said over and over is that they don't feel that way at all i mean for an astronaut being in space is the sweet spot right i mean this is what they have trained for and what they have dedicated so much of their professional lives to achieving and now that they're up there most of them don't want to leave at all were it not for the families back at home now for the families of course this has been a hardship there's no question about that i mean the the families have to make a series of adjustments every time this uh, this mission has been extended by a couple of months or a couple of weeks and now now a couple of days just this week when the first attempted launch what had to be scrubbed because of a technical issue a uh, mechanical issue uh, but here we are uh, now uh, 15 minutes uh, into the mission itself. And again, fingers crossed, everything goes as great as the first 15 minutes have. And Mark Strassman, we really appreciate you. Scott, I understand you want to weigh in. Go for it. Yeah, I was just wanted to say that uh, we astronauts live to spend time in space. You know, most of an astronaut's career is spent uh, on the ground, either supporting other missions or in training for the ones that we fly ourselves. So uh, the, the gift of spaceflight that Sonny and Butch have received, they're very grateful, actually, for this extension, believe it or not. I, I certainly it was tough on their family and friends to have them away from from home for a lot longer than uh, they had uh, anticipated. Uh, but they were um, also prepared to spend a longer mission, uh, as has transpired. And uh, I know they're grateful for that experience. And they've done an outstanding job. They've stepped in and, and supported other uh, science experiments during their uh, flight and uh, have been incredibly valuable additions to the, uh, the current space station uh, crew. So uh, great, great job by both of them. Well, Scott, we really appreciate you weighing in on that. Thank you so much, Scott Parazinski. Let's bring in Derek Pitts for more, a chief astronomer for the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Derek, how are things looking to you so far? Everything looks great. It's a picture-perfect launch, and uh, everything seems to be working fine. They're on their way. I, 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 I crossed my fingers and was very glad to see that the uh, first stage dropped off just fine, second stage dropped off just fine, and they're now in the coast phase. So all looking good. And why is, 
What is Crew 10 also going to be uh, tasked with when they're up at the International Space Station for about four or so months? Well, Crew 10 is going to continue the work that's being done by all of these crews, which is figuring out better ways to adapt to living and working in space. So they'll have a series of experiments that they go through, testing all kinds of aspects of life in space to try to figure out ways in which they can make things better. You have to keep in mind that the work that's being done is enabling astronauts to get ready, prepare for, uh, as well as developing the engineering that's going to be necessary to get us back to the surface of the moon and eventually, at some point in the, in the future, get us off to Mars as well. So all the work that they're doing is building the, the infrastructure and laying the groundwork for us getting back to the moon. What will the return of Starliner astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams look like? It'll be a great celebration is what it'll be, actually. Uh, they will be celebrating having had this fabulous opportunity to spend way more time in space than they were expecting to spend. You know, as Mark said, that nine and a half months uh, certainly is a long time, longer than the eight days that they were expected to. But as Scott Parazinski said, they live for this moment when they can spend more time in space. So there'll be a lot of celebrating about having that done. But they'll also be very grateful to be back to Earth and get back with their families and resume their life here on planet Earth. Well, Derek Pitts, always good to see you. Our thanks as well to Scott Parazinski and Mark Strassman. Thank you all for your time and just incredible coverage of this launch.